we start with a puzzle. In this video, you will learn about falling objects feeling air resistance and reaching a maximum speed as they fall. But can an object ever have a terminal speed when it is rising? Welcome to this nothing nerdy video on fluid resistance to motion. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. You have to understand why objects which fall in a fluid will, after time, stop accelerating when they reach a terminal speed. The word qualitatively means you won't have to make calculations on this topic. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. Although many free fall questions ignore air resistance, in reality it is often a factor. Air and other fluids, such as water, exert resistive forces on moving objects. Moreover, the resistance increases the faster an object moves. This means, for a falling object, that at some point the force resisting motion increases to be equal to the constant gravitational force pulling it down. Then the acceleration will be zero, and the object will have a constant speed known as terminal speed. This mouse is about to start falling. Initially, it feels only the force of gravity and accelerates at 9.8 meters per second squared. Now that it has a velocity, the mouse begins to experience air resistance, which means that the resultant force on it and its acceleration are now less than g. Eventually, the forces down and up will be equal, and so the mouse is experiencing zero acceleration and its speed won't increase any further. It has reached terminal speed. The factors which affect the size of the terminal speed of an object are its mass, the fluid it is falling through, and its shape and orientation. A tiny animal, such as a mouse, because of its light mass and relatively large surface area, will probably not be hurt when it falls under gravity, since the terminal velocity it reaches is low. This is not true for human beings. Because of its large surface, a parachute experiences a big air resistance. This helps it to reach a terminal speed, which is low enough that the person who is attached to it is not damaged on impact. It is important to remember that where a body is experiencing air resistance, its acceleration is not uniform until it reaches terminal velocity, so you cannot use the simple equations under those circumstances. To answer a question like this, we need to be able to interpret the graph, and we draw tangents at various points on the graph to uh, analyze it, the steepest first line is the uh, acceleration due to gravity, which it initially has. Um, the second acceleration is still positive, but is much less because there is a resistive force now from the drag uh, on the parachutist. When we look at C, we've now got a negative acceleration, which means that it's slowing down as it travels downwards. And lastly, we've got an almost horizontal line which shows that there is terminal velocity. Um, having understood all of that, we can see that the point when the parachute opens is B. Here is the puzzle we posed at the start. Terminal speed is achieved when the resistive force can increase with velocity, while the force which moves the object forward is constant. Eventually, they will balance. Bubbles in a liquid rise because they experience a constant buoyant force which is greater than their weight. This makes them accelerate upwards. The resistive force due to the liquid increases as the bubble speeds up until it reaches its terminal speed in an upwards direction. So to the answer to this question is yes, a bubble is one example, a hot air balloon is another. 